Hello, I'm Bob Lancer, and the purpose of this show is to lead you into the life you truly want to be living. It is also about helping you to better understand and relate with others, especially the children in your life, in support of their great potential. So this show is for anyone who wants to live with more peace and purpose and positive power to soar into the fulfillment of our greatest promise. The title of today's presentation is True Parent Authority, Shifting from Reaction to Direction. It is not our children's actions, it is our reactions that make parenting so draining. When your child can make you react, your child is actually the one in charge. Your internal reactions of intense emotionalism, feelings of stress and strain and overwhelm, those are the drains. That's where you lose power. That's where you cause your parenting experience to feel so burdensome, so taxing, so dissatisfying, so difficult. With practice, you can learn to recognize when you are experiencing an internal reaction of frustration or stress or overwhelm and instantly let it go. What you do about your child's behavior, what you say in response to your child's behavior, does not have to include an internal intense reaction. Practice remaining internally relaxed and free from reaction responding to your child's needs, free from the internal reactions that make the process so draining. You want your child to do what you ask him to do. You want him to do it without putting up a fuss. And you don't want to have to repeat yourself over and over. In fact, wouldn't you actually prefer that your child read the situation, recognize what is needed of her, and then do it well, with alacrity, without having to be asked at all? Well, that's the goal. And as you respond in line with that goal, you achieve it. But each time that you react to your child's behavior automatically, habitually, in a state of stress and strain, you are not directing yourself in line with where you want the situation to go. And therefore, you're not directing the situation. When you choose your response you begin to establish your true parental authority. You begin directing the situation instead of reacting to the situation. How do you want your child to see you and to feel about you? It's heartbreaking for a parent to see a child afraid of you, feeling intimidated, feeling threatened, unsafe, insecure about what you're going to do. It hurts deeply to see that Because the child who expresses that fear is expressing deep hurt. And there's no way that a sane parent cannot feel the pain that his or her child is feeling. You don't have to rule your child with fear. You want your child to align his behavior with your agenda because your agenda is aligned with your child's best interests, or at least that's how it ought to be. If you want your child to do as you say, just to prove that you are in charge, that's actually a form of selfish parenting. Our responsibility as parents is to provide our children with the influences and support they need to fulfill their glorious potential to lead a great, happy, wonderful life. Wouldn't you love your child to recognize what you want done and to do it? not just because it aligns with his or her interests, but also because your child cares about you and wants your life to be easier and pleasant. That's how you raise a child to be sensitive and caring so that your child can create wonderful relationships. True parent authority is not about your child counting on you. The purpose of true parent authority is not to place yourself in the position of dictator, It is to prepare your child for totally responsible and wise self-direction. True parent authority is about preparing your child to accurately assess the situation that she's in before plunging into impulsive behavior. You don't want to have to tell your child to settle down because she's getting too wild in the back seat as you drive your car down busy streets. 
You want your child to recognize the danger of that wild behavior and based on that observation, to monitor himself and maintain his composure for the good of everyone in the car and outside the car. The more you need to repeat yourself to get your child to perform a responsible task, like closing her dresser drawer without slamming it after she takes out what she needs, the less real authority your child has over herself. In fact, the more you have to tell your child what to do, the less real parental authority you possess in your relationship with your child. The goal of parental authority is to gradually prepare your child to become his own authority so that he can reflect on what he is about to do and based on his accurate assessment of his situation come up with wise and loving choices that he can follow through on. You don't want to have to tell your child what to do You have enough to do. You want your child to do it on his own, but you have to prepare a child to do that. The highest level of parental authority is not displayed by the parent who issues orders that are obeyed out of respect for the parent's role. Just because I said so is not really a good reason to do it. The best reason to do it is because it's actually the right thing for your child to do. The more your child makes the right decisions on his own, the easier your job of parenting becomes and the more energy you have to do things other than directing your child. There's a vast difference between letting your child run his own life irresponsibly and preparing your child to run his own life responsibly. Directing too much, demanding blind robotic obedience does not support the development of your child's decision-making faculty. Giving your child too much leeway to drift off course fosters the child's development of problematic behavior. Each time your child leaves her plate on the table after a meal, instead of clearing her own space responsibly, she develops inconsiderate attitudes and disorderly, irresponsible behavior patterns. As those behavior patterns develop, your child becomes more dependent, not independent. Criticizing, complaining, Reacting with annoyance when the child behaves irresponsibly does not teach the child how to behave any better. It doesn't lead the child into a higher level of self-direction. In fact, as a general rule, the more you complain and criticize in frustration, the more that develops into your own habitual parenting pattern. It causes the child to become stuck in the very pattern you want changed, just as it causes you to become stuck in the frustrating pattern you want out of. For true parent authority, authority that actually leads the child into increasingly independent, responsible self-direction, we need to avoid three things. Over-directing the child, under-directing the child, and misdirecting the child. And we need to employ what we can call right direction of the child. Over-direction occurs when you do not give your child enough freedom to get it right on his own. When you jump in and intervene needlessly, or when you direct your child so forcefully that he's not exercising his power of self-direction, but just passively succumbing to your will, or when you offer the child help that he really doesn't need, when he'd be better off doing his best to do it on his own, you over-direct and thus interfere with or suppress the child's development of responsible self-direction. We need to give our children enough freedom to make mistakes or to demonstrate that a mistake is inevitable because that defines the moment when our direction is truly needed. Only when the mistake would be too costly to permit do we need to step in beforehand. But even then, it should be to the most minimal degree necessary to protect those who would be harmed, including the child himself. Give the child all the freedom he can handle and he will give you all the control that he really needs from you. As much as possible, we want the child to exercise her capacities for assessment of the situation, execution of right choice, and skillful action in line with her accurate assessment of what is being called for. We want to support the child's development of the right use of his own free will. We don't want the child to be dependent upon others making her decisions for her. 
We want to aim her development toward her increasing ability to make sound decisions for herself and on her own. Overdirection usurps the child's power to develop higher authority over himself. Underdirection means that the child is given more freedom than he can responsibly handle. Too much freedom to make mistakes. He might leave a mess behind as he skips to the next activity. The child who does this once is likely to do it again. And each time he repeats this behavior, the more habitual that behavior grows. When a child has demonstrated this behavior, he is calling for right direction. He needs you to step in and guide him through the steps of putting things back in their proper place when he's done with them. If you merely react to the child's mess with anger and frustration and harsh words of complaint, you are then misdirecting the child by modeling a poor handling of the situation. Your angry reactions drain you of power, make you feel overwhelmed, unhappy, frustrated, and out of control. Your angry reactions also incite the child's anger, igniting a drive to retaliate and rebel rather than to comply and cooperate. The parent who parents with much anger and stress lacks real authority over herself. True parent authority begins with being in charge of yourself. If you can't direct your own responses to the situation, your ability to direct your child is short-circuited. Right direction of the child is educational. The most successful teachers make their lessons fun and interesting. You can't effectively teach anything when you feel impatient, critical, and unnerved. Frustrated parents complain, I have to react with anger. I have to react with stress. I have to teach him that he can't get away with it. I have to teach him right from wrong. And you do have to teach your child, but you can't teach your child right from the wrong state, in the wrong way. When you're feeling upset and frustrated, you can't teach effectively. Effective teachers are not frustrated. They're not impatient. They're patient. They're enthused. And they're in love with their student. And when you become frustrated and impatient with your child, you cause your child to react with defensiveness that shuts down her ability to learn. So you can't teach a child right from wrong when you're reacting with anger and stress. You can't teach a child how to behave better or to behave better when you yourself are behaving badly by mistreating yourself with excessive stress and strain. Right direction is kind. It's loving. It's relaxed. It's focused and it's fun. Both teacher and pupil feel happy. The best work is always done with enjoyment. The most learning takes place with joy. Guiding the child with words and actions, offering the child over four a simple good reason for doing what is expected, this constitutes right direction that leads the child into more independent, responsible self-direction. What do you expect? When you expect your child to behave a certain way, and the child does not behave that way, it means that your expectations were misguided. The child is simply showing you, I need you to be more engaged with me, helping me to stay focused and engaged in the task you want me to perform. I need you to perhaps demonstrate, even once again, how to do as you expect. I may need you to be more clear about what you want and why it is in line with my higher development or best interests. I need you to be patient and persevering in helping me enough to outgrow my need for help in this area. The child does not need you to blow your top because that's a fit of misdirection. The child needs you to preserve your peace and poise, to relax, to be free of internal reactivity as you guide her step by step, as she clears her place setting from the table or puts her things away when she's done with them. Right direction takes a tremendous amount of patience and self-control as you constructively help your child to do what is right. Avoid over-directing by giving your child the chance to show you that she can do what is right on her own without your coaching or support. If the child lets you down again, avoid harsh emotional reactions because these constitute misdirection. 
Simply engage in right direction once again. Make it your goal to gradually wean your child off of dependence upon your authority by never doing more than is necessary and never doing less. Whatever you do, regard it as an experiment. If your child needs more help from you, don't complain. Do a bit more for the child. As taxing as it may seem to provide right direction, it is infinitely less taxing than the toll of your angry, stressful reactions. Those reactions teach the child to be more reactive, more irresponsible, more irrational, and even more vindictive, making your job of parenting that much harder and making your child less successful and making you both more unhappy. When done calmly, you can totally enjoy the process of right direction and delight in its positive results. Feelings of overwhelm are a sure sign that you are losing your true parental authority. When you feel overwhelmed by the demands of parenting or of your life in general, you have slipped from power to powerlessness, from victor to victim. Feelings of overwhelm constitute an internal state of reacting too much. The instant that you notice yourself feeling emotionally overwhelmed, ease up. Take a breath, relax. Remember that feeling good inside is absolutely necessary for you to enjoy your children and to be as successful as you can in parenting. Don't blame your feelings of overwhelm on how your children behave or on the demands of responsible living. It is essential that we learn how to remain free of overwhelm True parental authority is based on an attitude of calm, confidence, and control. Work as hard as you can without being too hard on yourself. You are too hard on yourself when you live in fear, anxiety, resentment, frustration, and intense feelings of disappointment. Your life really is always on track, always on target, always working out for the best for you and for everyone you love. But that's the way life is. You never have to worry. Just do your best work in the enjoyment of what you are doing. When it all begins feeling like too much work, take that feeling as a sign that it is now time to let go. Demonstrating true parent authority does not require you to constantly be working. It requires you to work when work is required, but also to rest with trust and faith when that is required. Practice doing what must be done without internal stress or emotional strain. You need to be relaxed enough for the spirit of joy to flow freely through you. And as that spirit flows through you, it flows into your child. And a happy parent and a happy child behave better than an unhappy parent and an unhappy child. If you're not fully enjoying your parenting, you're not doing it right. Work takes discipline. And child discipline begins with adult self-discipline. Your children will discipline themselves better as you discipline yourself better. Responsible self-discipline does not mean that you work so hard that you hate your life and yourself and have no patience when it comes to your children. It means disciplining yourself to work your hardest and your best without anger, anxiety, or stress. It means disciplining yourself to not allow yourself to push so hard for results that you can't stand the process of bringing them about. If you drive yourself too hard, you will be too impatient and too demanding with your children, and as a result, your children will behave in ways that trigger off your impatience and dissatisfaction more and more. You work too hard when you overdirect by being too controlling, and you Work too hard when you misdirect by being too harshly reactive. As you do a better job of leading yourself, you will naturally do a better job of leading your child. You do have authority over your child, but how well are you using that power of authority? Everything you say, think, feel, and do influences your child in some way. No parent really lacks authority but you may be misusing your power of authority by depending too heavily on your child for you to avoid reacting too harshly. The better you administer your power of authority, which is your control and influence, the more satisfied with the results you're bound to feel. When you stressfully struggle for control, you experience the pain and drain of the misuse of your power. 
while working for results, improve how you work instead of distressing over the apparent limits of your control. We can simply classify your power of authority into four basic forms of influence. Speech, emotion, action, and thought. As you master your direction of these potent influences, you make the most of your power of authority and enjoy the most satisfying relationship with your child as you lead your child into a satisfying life. The opposite of this approach can be described as automatically reacting to events and hoping for the best while worrying about the worst outcome. While there is no way to guarantee results due to the infinite number of factors beyond our control, worrying about results represents a misuse of your power. Ideally, we want to be so focused on making the best use of our power of control or authority that we waste no energy worrying about what we cannot control. Using speech effectively includes exposing the child to clear, accurate articulation, sophisticated vocabulary. It means protecting the child from negative verbal programming by using put-downs. Your child will become who you tell your child he is. When you issue put-downs out of frustration, saying things like, you're a liar, you're a disappointment, you're irresponsible, you're dishonest. Those labels seep into the child's subconscious and program the child to prove them to be accurate. They're self-fulfilling prophecies. Avoid destructive complaining, aimless meandering of speech. Because however you speak to a child and around a child programs the child to communicate similarly. Are you actually criticizing when you're intending to be corrective? Are you pointing out what your child does wrong to the extent that it's lowering your child's self-esteem and self-confidence, thereby making it harder for him to do better? As you master your power of speech in your relationship with your child, your words will work for your child. The way you communicate will be instilled in your child and boost your child's power to communicate effectively and succeed in life as a result. Use your emotion power effectively. Waste no energy on petty personal conflict. Strife aimed at proving your dominance, proving how right you are and how wrong others are for mere ego satisfaction. The way that you react emotionally teaches your child to react similarly. Maintaining emotional balance for optimum resourcefulness, health, and healing teaches your child to function with the emotional balance she needs to do her best in every situation. Avoid projecting the destructive influence of condescending attitudes and the annoyance and impatience that blocks education, incites rebellion and retaliation, and lowers the child's motivation, self-confidence, and self-esteem. Demonstrate emotional resilience and determination in the face of opposition. Let your feeling of being let down pass. Practice trusting that everything is bound to work out for the best. And don't grasp at life to try to control too much out of fear of what may be beyond your control. Another way of demonstrating positive, true parental authority through your emotions is by building a totally stable and deep bond of loving adoration, appreciation, and respect for your child so that your child has absolutely no fear of you but is filled with love and appreciation and respect for you. Avoid overexposing the child to intense emotional reactions that generate chaos, poor reasoning, and superficial judgment. When you go through grief in a healthy way, you teach your child how to go through grief. Expose your child to your feelings of sacredness by bringing your child into those environments that you find inspiring and that cause deep feelings of reverence to rise up within you. This is how we teach children to experience the sacred. And use your action effectively by working for your goals, by maintaining physical fitness through right diet, rest, and exercise. Demonstrate orderly, organized, decent behavior. Provide your child with the active engagement and supervision needed to keep his or her behavior and emotionalism on track. If you allow your child to get too wild before stepping in to help her calm down, that wild emotional energy becomes uncontainable for the child and develops habitual chaotic behavior patterns. Demonstrate the time management of rush-free goal orientation 
What that means is that you are eliminating the rush from your life because the more you rush, the more your intensity level is so high that you can't recognize what your child really needs before you react to his behavior. And your heightened emotional intensity will cause your child to be too intense to be able to control himself. And use the power of thought effectively by practicing determined thinking rather than reactive or chaotic thinking. Determined thinking means that you're focusing on what it is you want to accomplish in life and how you can accomplish it instead of just allowing your thoughts to wander into negative what-if scenarios that cause you to worry or just letting your thought wander wherever it happens to go. Every thought uses energy. The better you direct your thinking, the better you direct your life. Avoid emotionally disturbed thinking, thinking thoughts that cause you to feel angry or frustrated, insecure, or disappointed. If you really examine your negative emotional reactions, you'll see that they're never caused by what's really happening. They're caused by how you're thinking about what's really happening. In other words, your thinking is what's disturbing you. And every time you engage in a negative, stressful, emotional reaction, you lose power. Power that you need to apply to achieve your most important goals in life. Gain mastery of your thinking by clarifying your goals and priorities on a routine basis. Be very clear about exactly what it is that is most important to you. Your goals are like targets that you are to aim your daily life towards. As you do that, you demonstrate orderly thought, orderly action, orderly emotion, orderly speech. And that modeling influences your child to develop more orderly behavior, thought, feelings, and speech. Direct your thought consciously and constructively and visualize success. When you notice yourself visualizing failure, let those visions go. The deepest level of true parent authority, has to do with your spiritual connection. You have to believe in the goodness or rightness of what you're doing to maintain your position of leverage in life. If you're doing what you don't believe in, you feel unworthy of your child's trust and respect, and you are subtly sending out a signal that your child receives and will respond to by treating you with a lack of trust and a lack of respect. There really is no true authority without spiritual integration. In other words, integrating the spiritual dimension of your being into everything you do. You lose your power. You lose your authority. You become a hollow shell, a mere mask of authority, as you depart from the path of your authentic feeling of spiritual inspiration, connection, and fulfillment. As you hone your allegiance to the highest spiritual will within you, as you remain focused on improving your skills, as you expand your knowledge and understanding of your child and the general principles of child development, education, and behavior management, you will experience more evident and satisfying true parental authority. And that's all the time we have for today's broadcast of Bob Lancer's Answers. To order a recording of today's show or of previous shows, and for more information about my work, check out my website at boblancer.com.